Hello YouTube, this is Frank from Architectural Aesthetics. Today in this video, I would like to share with you the creation process of a quick digital marker drawing. And just a few quick words regarding the background of this project. It's the very same community center we saw two weeks ago. And the objective of today's video is really to share with you how to construct a perspective digital marker drawing very quickly. Now, the bulk of this drawing was done using Autodesk's sketchbook, formerly known as Sketchbook Pro. For some reason, they decided to drop the Pro, which I think is a shame. I have been a staunch advocate for Sketchbook for years. Matter of fact, just last year, I wrote an article for the Sketchbook blog and I'll be linking the blog post in the description. And furthermore, I also have a video talking about the very same topic, which is how to use Sketchbook for digital marker drawing. You can find that video here at the upper right hand corner or down in the description below. With all that said, the very first step of this project was not done in Sketchbook, but in Procreate. This is simply because Sketchbook, as robust as it is, doesn't support freehand straight lines or time-lapse video recording all that well. And to expound on that, you can only draw straight lines in Sketchbook with the ruler tool, whereas in Procreate, it allows you to just long press on the screen to trigger the straight line mode, which is much faster and more comfortable uh, for someone who is doing freehand sketching. And regarding the time-lapse video recording functionality, though the paid iOS version of Sketchbook gives you the ability to record time-lapse video footages, you do not have the option to disable the zooming of the canvas, which can result in some rather nauseating footages if you do a lot of zooming like I tend to do. On the other hand, Procreate's time-lapse video recording gives you a stationary canvas, which makes more sense from a viewer standpoint, because why do you want to register all the canvas zooming movements anyway? And with that said, the freehand sketch was done in Procreate, and for the perspective framework, I imported the image file to the desktop version of Sketchbook. Now, why is that, you say? Well, you see that while the perspective tool on the desktop version of Sketchbook is robust and easy to use, it is not available for the iOS platform, and I find it very unfortunate considering its competitor Procreate supports it, albeit not as easy to use as a Sketchbook for the desktop platform. And with the help of the perspective guide tool, the framework can be done rather quickly. And the next and the most important step is obviously the coloring. Now I said this in the previous video I did on digital marker drawing, and I'll say it again in this video. The digital drawing softwares we have today, as powerful as they are, do not mimic traditional media we typically use in the architecture industry all that well. So take watercolor for example. Watercolor is probably the most common media traditionally used for architectural visualization. And a lot of softwares today claim to be able to mimic hand-drawn watercolor effects. However, in reality, the results are not very satisfying. I think you're better off just construct your perspective, uh, drop a bunch of watercolor paper textures in, and colorize the individual areas. But that's not exactly painting, you know. And in terms of gouache or acrylic architecture rendering using digital softwares, the end result oftentimes is so devoid of uh, the hand-drawn qualities that you may question yourself why not just 3D render the whole damn thing, which is going to be exponentially faster. However, my contention is that there is one media that is widely practiced by architects and designers that Sketchbook in particular mimics exceptionally well, and that media is Copic Marker. Now, we see architects, especially landscape architects, use Copic markers very frequently because of their semi-transparency and their ability to blend with other colors. And on the iOS version of Sketchbook, the combination of the Vintage Marker tool and the Copic Color Library allows you to create near-reality Copic marker drawings digitally without having to invest in the rather expensive markers. Now, the whole coloring process took me around two hours. In the end, I would say there's still 
much room for improvement, such as adding more details to the interior or adding reflections to the glazings, etc. But then again, this is meant to be a very swift exercise, and 20% of the details require 80% of the time, guys. So with all that said, I hope this video has been informative, and if you're interested in considering using Sketchbook for Copic marker drawings, please watch my other video on this topic, which I think is much more in-depth. And that said, please give this video a thumbs up, and I'll see all of you next Sunday. Bye-bye.